recognized in the presence of the beings of that time, passed from generation to generation and gradually took the form of a maleficent, fantastic science under the name of alchemy, the very name of that great science which had indeed existed there as a branch of genuine knowledge during long past epochs when the consequences of the properties of the organ Kundabuffer had not yet been completely crystallized in the presence of their ancestors, a science that could have been most useful, or indeed essential, for all free brain beings there, even of contemporary times. Now at that period to which my tale relates, this Persian king needed for one or another of his undoubtedly Hasnamusia names a large amount of the metal called gold, rare on the surface of the earth, and as he had heard about this method, invented by the future Hasnamus individual Harnakum, he was eager to obtain gold by so easy a means. When this Persian king had definitely decided to obtain gold by means of alchemy, he realized then and there with the whole of his being that he did not yet know that little secret, without which it was absolutely impossible to fulfill this desire so he began to ponder how to find out that little secret, and this pondering of his led to the following conclusion. Since the learned already have knowledge of every other kind of mystery, there must be at least one of them to whom this mystery is known. Having finally reached this conclusion, he began to wonder with an intensified functioning of being astonishment, why such a simple idea had never entered his head before and summoning certain of his faithful subjects, he ordered them to find out which of the learned beings of his capital knew about this mystery. When it was reported to him the following day that not a single one of the learned beings of the capital knew this secret, he ordered further inquiries to be made among learned beings of his entire realm and, when after several days he received the same negative reply, he began once more to ponder, this time very seriously. His serious reflection first led his reason to the conclusion that one or another of the learned beings of his community undoubtedly knew this secret. But of course, since professional secrecy was strictly observed among beings of that fraternity, nobody was willing to reveal it. It. He then realized that it was necessary not merely to question, but to put pressure on the learned beings to compel them to reply. That same day, he gave appropriate instructions to his closest assistants in such matters, and they immediately began making interrogations, using methods that had long been customary among power-possessing beings for interrogating ordinary beings. And when this eccentric Persian king finally became convinced that the learned beings of his community really knew nothing about this mystery, he began to look in other communities for learned beings who might know about it. As the kings of these other communities were unwilling to hand over their learned beings for interrogation, he decided to compel these recalcitrant rulers by force and so, at the head of the numerous hordes under his sway, he set off on what are called, military expeditions. This Persian king had many hordes in subjection to him because at that period, thanks to the foreseeing adaptability of great nature, what is called the birth rate, 
had increased among the beings of the part of the surface of your planet where his kingdom was situated. Moreover, at this same period, the conditions required for the common cosmic proto-autocratic process were being actualized whereby there had to issue from this region of the surface of your planet more of those vibrations that arise from the destruction of the existence of beings. At this point Hassan interrupted Beelzebub with the following words. Dear Grandfather, I do not understand why the issuing of the vibrations required to actualize this most great cosmic process should depend on a particular region of the surface of the planet. To his grandson's question Beelzebub replied. Since before long I intend to make the problem of the terrible process of reciprocal destruction, which they call, war, the theme of one of my tales concerning the three brain beings of the planet Earth, it is better to defer this question of yours until this special tale, because then, I think, you will understand it clearly. Having said this, Beelzebub returned to his narrative about the Babylonian events. When this eccentric Persian king with his subject hordes began to conquer the beings of other communities and to carry off their learned beings by force, he assigned the city of Babylon as a gathering place for them, and there they were taken in order that this lord of half the continent of Asia could interrogate them as he pleased, in the hope that one of them might happen to know the secret of turning base metal into gold. With the same name he even undertook what is called a campaign into the country of Egypt. And he undertook this campaign because at that period the learned beings of all the continents were assembled there, the opinion being widely held that more information pertaining to their various sciences was available in this Egypt than anywhere else on their planet. Planet this Persian conqueror then carried off from Egypt all the learned beings he found there, both the native ones and those from other communities, and among their number were several Egyptian priests, descendants of those learned members of the society of Akans who, having chance to survive, had been the first to populate the country. But when a little later a new craze arose in the presence, of that eccentric Persian king, this time for the process itself of the destruction of the existence of his fellow beings, the new craze supplanted the former one, and he forgot all about the learned beings, who then began to exist freely in the city of Babylon awaiting his further instructions. The learned beings thus assembled from almost the whole of the planet in the city of Babylon often used to meet together, and of course, as is proper to to learn beings on the planet Earth. They discussed among themselves questions immeasurably beyond their comprehension, from which they could never derive anything useful whatsoever, either for themselves or for the ordinary beings there. Well, it was precisely during these meetings and discussions that there arose among them, as generally happens with terrestrial learned beings, a burning question of the day, which this time in some way or other stirred them, as they say, to their very marrow. Single quote. The question that chanced to become the burning question of the day, so vitally affected the whole being of every one of them that they even climbed down from their pedestals and began discussing it not only only with the learn, like themselves, but here, there, and everywhere, with anyone they happen to come across.
As a result, the interest aroused by this question gradually spread among all the ordinary three brain beings then existing in Babylon, and by the time we arrived it had become the question of the day, for everyone, everyone there. Not only did the learned beings themselves talk about and discuss this question, but similar conversations and arguments raged like fury among the ordinary beings. Beings there also. It was talked about and discussed by young and old, by men and women, and even by the Babylonian butchers. And all, especially the learned, learned, were exceedingly anxious to know more about this question. Before our arrival there, many of the beings existing in Babylon had even lost their reason over it, and many others were already candidates for losing theirs. This, burning question of the day, Day, which both the sorry scientists and the ordinary beings of the city of Babylon wanted to resolve was whether or not they had a soul. All sorts of fantastic theories about this question existed in Babylon, and at every moment new theories were being cooked up, and of course, each of these catchy theories had its devotees. In spite of the number and variety of these theories, they were all based upon two quite opposite assumptions. One of these was called the the athe athe atheistic, and the other the idealistic or dualistic. All the dualistic theories maintain the existence of the soul, and of course its immortality, as well as every conceivable tribulation it might suffer after the death of the being, man. And all the atheistic theories maintain just the opposite. In short, my boy, when he arrived in the city of Babylon, there was then Taking place what what is called the building of the Tower of Babel. Quote. Having uttered these words, Beelzebub thought a moment and went on as follows. Now I wish to explain to you the ex expression, the building of the Tower of Babel, which I just used and which is very often used on your planet by the contemporary free brain beings. I wish to touch upon this expression and explain it to you, first because I chanced to be a witness of all the events that gave rise to it and second because the history of its arising and its transformation transformation in the understanding of your contemporary favorites favorites can show you very clearly that always to the same abnormally established established conditions of ordinary being existence 
No exact information about events that have really occurred there among beings of former epochs ever reaches the beings of later generations and if something like this expression does happen to reach them, their fantastic reason Reason at once elaborates a whole theory on the basis of it, thus multiplying and In their presence those illusory, being egoplasticory, or what they call, psychic images, thanks to which there has arisen in the universe that strange, unique psyche, which every one of your favorites has. Well, my goal. Boy, when we arrived in Babylon and I began mingling with various beings and making corresponding observations in order to clear up the question that had interested me, almost everywhere I went I ran across those learned beings. Beings who were meeting in great numbers, and I began associating exclusively with them, confining my observations to them and to their individualities. Among the learned beings whom I often met for this sake of my aim was a certain Hamelinadir, who had been brought there under compulsion from Egypt. Egypt. During these meetings between this terrestrial free-brained being, Hamelinadir, and myself, almost the same relations were established as in general prevail between free-brained beings who often meet one another. This Hamanadir was one of those learned beings in whose common presence the factors for the impulses of a free-brained being, which which had passed to him by heredity, were not entirely atrophied, and moreover, it turned out that during his preparatory age the responsible beings beings around him had prepared him to be more or less normally responsible. I should add that at that time there were many many such learned beings in the city of Babylon. Although this learned Hamelinadir was descended from the race of beings called Assyri Assyrian, and his arising and preparation for becoming a responsible being had taken place in that very city of Babylon, Babylon, his knowledge had been acquired in Egypt, in the highest school of all those existing on the earth at that time, called the School for Materializing Thought. When I first met him he was at an age when his I, in the sense of intelligently directing the automatic psychic functioning of his common presence, had already attained the maximum stability possible for a free-centered being of the planet Earth at that time, so that during what is called his passive waking state, he had being manifestations that were very clearly expressed, such as consciousness of self, impartiality, sincerity, sensitivity, resourcefulness, and so forth. Shortly after our arrival in Babylon, I began going with this Hamelinadir to various meetings of the learned beings I have mentioned, where I listened to every imaginable kind of what they called report upon the very subject that was then the question of the day and the cause of such agitation of minds throughout Babylon.
My friend Hamily Nadir was also very wrought up about this burning question. He was agitated and perplexed by the fact that the numerous theories on this subject, the new as well as the old, were all, in spite of their entirely contradictory proofs, equally plausible and convincing. The theories proving that we have a soul, he said, were very logically and con convincingly expounded, but equally logical and convincing were those proving quite the contrary. So that you can put yourself in the place of that That likable Assyrian, I shall explain to you that in general on your planet, then in Babylon as well as at the present time, all the theories on a question, question such as that of the beyond or any other detailed clarification of some particular fact are nearly always invented by those free-brained beings in whom most of the consequences of the properties of the organ kundabuffer have been completely crystallized so that there actively functions in their presence the being property they call cunning owing to this either consciously of course with that sort of reason which they alone possess or automatically, that is of itself, they gradually acquire in their in their common presence the capacity for spotting the weaknesses and Nesses in the psyche of beings like themselves, and this capacity gradually forms data in them for the ability to sense and at times even to understand the peculiar logic of the beings around them, and according to these data they invent an elaborate sum. Some theory concerning this or that question and as I have already told you, because of the gradual atrophy of the being function called the instinctive sensing of cosmic truths in most of the three brain beings there. Also owing to the abnormal conditions of ordinary being existence established by them, if one of them happens to the devote himself to an intensive study of any of these theories, he is bound willy-nilly to be convinced by it with the whole of his presence. Well, my boy, Seven of their months after our arrival in the city of Babylon I went one day with my friend Hamily Nadir to what is, is called a general scientific conference. Single quote. This scientific conference had been convened by the learned beings previously brought there, under compulsion, by the Persian king, who had meanwhile got over his praise for the science of alchemy and forgotten all about it, and there were also present at this conference many other learned beings from other communities, communities, who had come there voluntarily, as they said, for the love of science. At this general scientific conference that day, the order of speakers was determined by lot. My friend Hamily Nadir was among those who were to report on various topics, and therefore drew a lot, it fell to him to speak fifth. 
of the speakers who preceded him, some reported on new theories they had invented, while others criticized theories already established and well known to everybody. Everybody. At last came the turn of this likable Assyrian. He mounted what is called the rostrum, and as he did so some attendants hung a placard above it announcing the subject of the speech to be given, as was the custom at that time. The placard stated that the speaker had chosen as his theme the instability of human reason. Single quote. This terrestrial friend of mine began by explaining the structure as as he understood it of the human head brawn and in what cases and in what manner various impressions are perceived by the other brains of man and how It is only after a definite agreement among all the brains that the total results are impressed on the head brain. Single quote. At first he spoke calmly, but the long longer he spoke, the more agitated he became, until his voice rose to a shout as he began to criticize the reason in man. At the same time, he merc mercilessly criticized his own reason. Still continuing to shout, he very logically and convincingly demonstrated the instability and fickleness of human reason, giving various examples of how easy it is to persuade and convince this reason of anything you like. Although in the midst of the shouting of this terrestrial friend of mine, Hamelina dear, the sound of his sobbing could be heard, nevertheless, even while sobbing, he continued to shout, to every man, and also of course to me, it is quite easy to prove anything whatever, all you need to know is which. Shocks and which associations to arouse in the various brains while one or another, truth, is being proved it is even easy to prove to a man that our whole world and all the people in it are nothing but an illusion, and that the authenticity and reality of the world are nothing but a corn, and what is more, the corn on the big toe of his left foot apart from this corn, nothing in the world exists, everything only, seems, and even then only two, psychopaths squared. Quote single quote. At this point in the speech of this likable terrestrial free brain being, an attendant offered him a bowl of water, and after he had eagerly gulped it down, he continued to speak, but now more calmly. He said further, Take myself as an example I am not just an ordinary learned man I am known all over Babylon and in many other cities as an exceedingly learned and wise man. I completed the highest course of study that has ever existed on earth, and the like of which will probably never exist again. But what has this highest development given my reason with respect to that question which, for the past year or two, has been driving all Babylon insane? During this general dementia over the question of the soul, this reason of mine, in spite of its high development, has brought me nothing but five Fridays a week. Quote, over this period, I have followed with the greatest attention and utmost seriousness all the old and new theories about the 
soul, and there is not a single one of them with whose author I do not inwardly agree, for all these theories are very logically and plausibly expounded, and such reason as I have cannot but agree with their logic and plausibility. I myself have written a very lengthy work on this question of the beyond, and no doubt many of those present are familiar with the logic of my thought, and probably